a young doctor is missing in Harare. His reported abduction and disappearance has sent shockwaves going around the country. His colleagues, fellow doctors and nurses in hospitals all around the city have downed their tools. They say he was abducted and if he's not returned, they won't return to work. On the morning of the fourth day of his disappearance, they tried to walk to the country's central business district in Harare to deliver a petition to parliament demanding the return of their colleague. As they exited the hospital, they came face to face with a human barricade, Harare's anti-riot police. They say the gathering is illegal and so was the march, so they blocked them from proceeding any further.
Doctors who are concerned concerned about their colleagues. But the law is absolutely clear. The law says that members of professional, vocational, or occupational bodies are exempt from FOSA for, for anything which, for purposes which are not political. Now, this is not a political gathering. This is about a, a, a doctor who has gone missing. They are concerned about about their colleague who has gone missing. I am aware of that. You have discussed it. I We simply want to no, I, I understand that. I understand that. I'm trying to call it. I'm trying to call it. But what I'm saying to you is that you are also officers of the law. We have a duty to uphold the law. And what we are seeing here is a violation of human rights. Or you can also take us to court. We march and then and then uh, and then you take us to court to say it's a legal. Oh, is that a, is that a threat? No, it's not. It's an answer. Oh, it's an answer. Yes. No, we're not going to confront you. We're not going to confront you. Of course, the, the doctors don't want that. But your members seem pretty upset about being really dispersed. Did you guys have any other options? So, um, well, I mean, to start with, they're my clients rather than my, my members, per se. But, um, um, you know, in terms of the law, the law is absolutely clear. The, the march can proceed in terms of the law. But if, if they proceed, you can see uh, what, what, what is waiting for them. Likely they will, they will be beaten. So it's a, it's, it's a decision that, uh, that, uh, that the doctors have, uh, have to make as to whether they, they go with the law, is, uh, the law is covering them. Um, but for them, this is about Peter. They don't want it to, to make, it, make it about themselves. They don't want to create more commotion for doctors to be, to be injured. Um, and so, and so, I think for them, they've had to, they've made the decision to say, let's, uh, let's, let's comply with this, even though it's an unjust uh, directive, uh, and they live to fight another day. Do you feel a little bit let down? Absolutely, and you know, this is the tragic thing: is this in, in the meeting which we just came out of? That was the spirit of the conversation. The police agreed. We we are here to protect you, to allow you to 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 proceed. And um, and uh, we even you know agreed on a route and everything, and then immediately as we as we leave, then they go and re renege on that uh, on that agreement. It's it's very disappointing. Okay, right. Just the last one. I'm going to be a bit unfair on you. Um, earlier on, um, 
the protest was almost interrupted by some members of the MDC and civilians yeah. were protesting. And when I spoke earlier to the superintendent, he said they can't allow the march to go on because there's risk that yeah. people will join in the march. Do you think that's a valid reason or should the cops simply take steps to make sure that the march isn't infiltrated but allow it to go on? Absolutely. You've, you've, you've said it absolutely right. The duty uh, uh, lies on the, on, the, on the state, on the police, to ensure that the march isn't infiltrated. That duty doesn't rest on the doctors. And the doctors actually in that meeting gave an undertaking, undertaking to the police to say, we will actually assist you. We, we don't want to be infiltrated either. So if there's any infiltrators, we will be the first ones to say, look, we don't know who this person is. Can you, can you, kindly, can you kindly escort them? So what happens next from here now? So I'm just waiting for, for further instructions from, from my clients, whether we whether we bring an urgent application to, to challenge this. Um, but uh, from, from, from their perspective, they just have to, they have to keep, um, um, keep on pushing, keep on demanding answers about, about where Peter is. Let's not, let's not get distracted from, about what this is about. This is not about a march. This is about a doctor who has been abducted who uh, for four days now no one knows where he is. So, so if, if the police won't allow them to march, then they need to, to think of other ways uh, to, uh, to make sure that their message is, is put across clearly to say that we want our colleague back and we want him back immediately. Thanks a lot, Dan. All right. Now, for us to march to Parliament and to leave our petition, uh, we actually agreed on the route that we're supposed to take. We're supposed to uh, go um, via Tongo Gara to Central then we're going to leave uh, a perimeter of about half a kilometer from Parliament. That's what we agreed. Uh, it is only when we got here, uh, when we received a call from the same person uh, telling us that we cannot go ahead and uh, only 10 people can, can, can go. So we, we really don't have an answer as to why we cannot march to the Parliament. Uh, of course, we cannot confront uh, the barricade. We know what they do to people. So, uh, so I think it is important for us to know that it is our right. It is part of our rights as health workers to be able to march to parliament. It's our right. We don't have to ask for permission. We don't have to ask for anything. We are supposed to be allowed to march to the uh, parliament to leave our petition but we were not allowed for reasons that are not at the time of release peter magombe is still missing police say they're investigating but peter's colleagues don't have faith in them the government agrees that peter was abducted but they blame a third force and say somebody is behind this notorious upsurge of abductions in zimbabwe but Peter's colleagues and many critics say the government is responsible for it.